שלום, שלום, שלום. First and foremost, we give all the praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai. Rakhuthu Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahushai, Ba'asham, Rekha Kudash. We give double honors to our beloved teachers of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to our sincere brothers pushing this truth throughout the four corners of the earth, risking their lives week in and week out to feed the lost sheep of Israel. Shalom to the 144, the governing body of men. Shalom to the one third, the hopeful elect of men, women and children. Forever we give all the praises and the glory to our highest power, Yahweh and his beloved son, Yahweh Shai. Amen, so be true. My name is Brother Ahab. And through the spirit and the power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Rekakwadash, I hope and pray that is edifying. Shalom. Now, I'm going to entitle this Repent. Turn to the Lord now. Repent. Turn to the Lord now. Okay? So, what I'm going to speak about is cloud busting and cloud seeding. And this is the inspiration from our beloved Elder Apostle Gabar. I was watching his lesson yesterday, last night. And Lord willing, I'm going to put his video in the description box. Daily Edification 4. That's Elder Apostle Gabar. Weather modification equals weather weaponization. Make it rain. Make it rain. And that was a very edifying lesson. You see a great millstone? They don't touch on the surface of things. They go into the depths of things. Knowledge. And this is why we say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. So that, that lesson there that Elder Apostle Gabbard did was very edifying. And also it's something that touched me in the spirit. That's why I'm doing this. Okay? Now, when I took this a picture here, this, as you could see, this is Hurricane um, Milton. There was another picture beside it and it said, of a hurricane, in you know, a picture, it says, evacuate now. Evacuate now. That's why I name this repent. Turn to the Lord now. Okay? Turn to the Lord now. Now listen to this. When you look at that word evacuate, right? It says, evacuate means remove someone from a place of danger to a safer place. All right? So when I saw that other picture beside this picture, it said evacuate now. So in other words, turn to the Lord now. Repent now before it's too late. Because these are all signs, you know, and wonders from our Heavenly Father. Yahweh Basham Yahushai. Okay? Evacuate. Turn to the Lord now. Here's a scripture to begin with before I go into it. Psalms 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Yahweh, Basham Yahushai, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is the protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place. And when we talk about the secret place of the Mosai, 
That's the scriptures, the Holy Bible, the Apocrypha, the Holy Scriptures. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Because when you turn to the Lord in truth and sincerity, and you have our apostles that teach us, and the bishops come down, right? You're going to understand and learn the scriptures from them. So that is the best place to be, have your mind set in these scriptures. He that dwelleth in the secret place, you're going to know all the hidden mysteries. And it's only our apostles from Great Millstone that breaks down these hidden mysteries. All right? So listen, repent, turn to the Lord now. That's why I said, and it said evacuate for safety. No, 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 no. If you want true safety, turn to the Lord now, right now. All right? You see, there's so much things going on on the, the, the hurricane now. The, the lights, they're out of uh, electricity, okay? There's so much things going on. Turn to the Lord now, repent. Good. So I've got a few things to say, Lord willing. Okay? Now, you see what Elder Pastor Gabar said yesterday, why it was on point. And what... <laughs> What um, touched me in the spirit is that he said, when he was vaguely remembering, he said um, something to the effect that when he saw that video about the um, cloud busting, right? Like I said, go into the video and you would see it, all right? He is wondering why, why would they do such a thing, all right? I'm vaguely remembering, forgive me if I'm wrong. All right? Please watch it. And that brought to my attention to something that happened going back in the 80s. And it's so powerful in a spiritual sense how things will play out as Elder Pastor, the way Elder Pastor Gabar said it, that it played out to now. The Most High Yahweh Sham Yashai, heavy. It's heavy. That's why he said, get to the scriptures. Turn to the Lord now. And the Lord will reveal things unto you. If it's his will. All right? Evacuate and do what? No, turn to the Lord. Because there's one thing about being in his body. You could run, but you can't hide. You could evacuate, but you can't hide. So the best thing to do is to run, turn to the Lord, Yahweh Basham Yoshai. Right? Turn to the scriptures, turn to the, to, 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 to the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right? Which has been taught to us. It's a blessing. Wow. So anyway. So as I was listening to Elder Pastor Gabar yesterday, Right, I remembered in the 80s when I was living in the Caribbean. In the 80s, that period, late 80s, we were experiencing a lot of drought. And it was bad, I'm telling you. You see, I've experienced earthquakes. I've experienced um, hurricanes. I've experienced um, 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 drought. And that ain't easy. Partial flooding. I've experienced all these things. Right? And everything's of the Lord. Yahweh Basham Yoshai. Okay? So, I remember in the 80s, it was in the late 80s, we was experiencing a, a drought. It was bad. No water for weeks. Every time the the, um, the the water truck used to come around to give us water. And that was so rationed. All right. It was a drought. And I remember this. Speaking to one of my friends. 
We grew up together. And he's like a whiz kid. Right? i never forget. Whiz kid, that guy. And we were speaking about, oh, we need water. And, in, and the sun, you know, in the Caribbean, that sun, when it hits you, right? Because in the Caribbean, you have to bathe three times a day. I'm telling you, no, no joke. It's so hot. Sometimes you might be sitting down with your family and you go, oh, I'm, I'm going to have a quick shower. <laughs> it just because it was so hot. All right? And we're experiencing drought. And from there, thereafter, there has been many droughts. So in the 80s, late 80s, we were speaking. And it's so funny how things could remember certain things. Yeah? So this is going back, what, how many years ago? 30 years ago? My calculation's not correct. All right? In the 80s. 30, 30-something 30 years ago. And I was speaking with my friend. And I said, you know, we need rain. We need rain. And he said, um, yeah, they could do something. They could do a thing called... Um, now, this is a whiz kid, you know, remember the time. No, he wasn't a kid. We were both grown up, you know, teenagers. He said, um, they could do cloud seeding. I said, yes, why don't they do cloud seeding? Why they don't do that? We need rain. Right? We're suffering. We need rain. Why they don't do it? And he said, well, the only disadvantage, I'm going to bring it up here now. He said, the only different disadvantage with cloud seed and they could do it but it can cause problems because if they manipulate it I'm going to read it now they may not can control it and that could cause floods so I goes oh wow floods okay that's <laughs> from one extreme to another but we're so desperate I said you know we need rain alright but it's form of manipulation. I'm going to read it now. Um, cloud seeding is a form of ma manipulation. And I'm going to talk about Elder Apostle Gabal, what he said later on. Cloud busting. Yeah. Right. So let me start here. It says cloud seeding. No, I typed in what is cloud seeding? Because I remember that cloud seeding. I never forgot that. Cloud seeding. So what is cloud seeding? It says cloud seeding is a weather modification technique that increases the likelihood of rain or snow. But it can't be snow in the, in the Caribbean. But it's rain. By introducing ice, I can't pronounce this word, this is nuke, nuclei, nuclei into clouds. The, the ice nuclei provide a base for snowflakes to form. Okay? So let me read some more. It says, Here are some details about cloud seeding. How it works. Tiny particles such as silver iodide are spread into the clouds. Silver iodide is a photosensitive substance that similar to structure to ice. Water droplets clusters around the particles, freezing it, ice crystals. How it's done? Cloud seeding can be done from the ground or from the aircraft. You see? Aircraft can disperse water sprays, salt particles or silver iodide particles. Right? Um, and it says... Um, how it effective it is. Cloud seeding can increase rainfall by 10 to 15 percent in humid atmospheres and 30 to 35 percent in clear atmospheres. All right. Okay. But as you read on, it can cause problems also. Right. It says um, uh, safety. Silver iodide is known to be harmful to humans. Or wildlife. You see, so you have to be careful what you're doing. You see, only the Lord, Yahweh Basham Yashai, could manipulate things. All right? In control, for good or bad. Okay? But the thing is, with Yahweh Basham Yashai in con control of all things, the law could start it and the law could 
is so precise he can finish it. That's the difference with Esau Edom. They have no control. So the Lord gave them the power to create certain things, but they can't be in control. All right? You see, that's the difference. Uh, let me see now. It says environmental concerns. Uh, Simaham seeding is far below the accepted limit. Environmental concerns. Some are concerned about the long-term global implications of cloud seeding. Others say that there is a little evidence that it could cloud seeding could increase precipitation. All right. <clears throat> so you know where I'm going. I've got some new, a few more here. So I typed in, what is the downside of cloud seeding? It says cloud seeding can have several negative effects, including silver toxicity, silver toxicity. Yeah. Some experts believe that large scale cloud seeding could lead to silver toxic toxicity. Yeah. Talk to you there. Environmental concerns, what I said a while ago. Um, it says unintended circumstance consequences. Uh, it says cloud seeding can have unintended consequences, such as too much rain and increased pollution. You see? So that's what my friend, he's saying to me at the time. He said that they can't, they could do it, but they can't control it. Right? That that my that friend of mine, you know, wow, I tell you, he was so and he was a whiz kid. I remember at school, right? He didn't go to the same school as I did, but he, he lived in the same area. And for him to say a thing like that, you know, about um cloud seeding. Alright, so let me go on a little bit more. I don't want to get too um go over the top. So yeah, here now. Is cloud seeding controllable? It says cloud seeding can be controlled to some degree. Going back to Yahweh Basham Yashai, everything is controlled in perfection from start to finish. Right? Like, look, Yahweh Shai is who? He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. Whatever Yahweh Basham Yashai starts, Yahweh Basham Yashai finishes in perfection. You see? Right? Uh, let me see. See, listen to this now. Um, cloud scene can control to some degree, but it's difficult to run a perfect control experiment due to the chaotic nature of weather. You see? They can't control it. They might con control it to a little bit, to a, to, the, to a, a fraction, but not in full effect like our Heavenly Father. All right? It's like our power. They give them the knowledge and wisdom to do a lot of things. But you think the Lord's going to give them the whole total power? No, no, no. Because Esau Eden is so wicked. As the scripture says, if you give them, like, how does it go again? They'll take your seat. If you give them all the power, they will take your seat. Okay? Here's another one. Um, weather conditions. The right atmospheric conditions are required for cloud seeding to be effective. For example, if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction, the seeding agents may miss its target. So you have to know what you're doing. So you think Esau Edom is doing everything in position? No. Only the Lord is perfect. Only Yahweh Basham Yashai Basham Kakudash is perfect. All right? So let me go into this now to, 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 to say what Elder Apostle Gabal was saying now. So I typed in, is cloud seeding and cloud busting the same? And he says, no. Cloud seeding and cloud busting are not the same thing. It says cloud seeding, a weather modification technique that increases rainfall or snowfall by introducing ice promoting materials into the clouds, right? Uh, cloud seeding, 
can be used to increase water supplies, prevent damaging weather, or as a military tactic, as heavy, right? And at that time, you see, because knowledge has, you see, you see, this has been going on from day one. But listen, when El Apostle Gabal was going into it, this this has been going on from the eighteen something fifty. There's a date. I can't remember the date. All right. So listen to this now. How they did um, cloud seeding, right? They do it by. Um, by using an uh, I think it's like an airplane or a drone or something like that. All right. So it says cloud busting, cloud busting, a device des designed by Australian psychoanalysis. Now this is where Elder Apostle Gabal, when he was doing his research, he said the same name. William. Will Wilhelm. Reek that he claimed could manipulate the atmosphere to create rain. Reek believed that the device could draw organ and it organ energy out of the atmosphere, causing clouds to be formed, to form and rain to fall. Right. And it says there, there is no verified evidence that the cloud buster works. Listen, we know. We know because they can manipulate it, right? Esau, Edom, they're wiser than Daniel. They search at all things. All right? Because who's destroying this earth right now? Esau, Edom. They go into everything. Yeah? They search at all things. So, as an elder Apostle Gabar, again as usual, on point, he says the man, um, Riek, developed, sorry, Salakia, a device designed. So when you check out the video, Elder Apostle Gabar, did you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? A device designed by Australian psychoanalysis, Wilhelm Riek that he claimed could manipulate right and this is what all esau edom is about manipulation yeah manipulation of the mind and that's what they, they want to try to play the lord they want to try to be like the most high okay imagine when we our heavenly father instructs our ways our thoughts when, when deep sleep fall upon us. The law can manipulate us at any time. That's the power he, he has and his son. But Esau, Edom, they want to be like the, the, the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yashai. They want to manipulate us. And what is one of the major ways they want to manipulate us is through the RFID chip. Okay? That implantable device. Okay? Because they want to have full control, manipulate you when to eat, when to talk. And if you don't comply, they could turn it off. They want to manipulate you. But who's in charge? This is why we say, repent, turn to the Lord now. The Lord is perfect. We want, we need Yahweh Basham Yahshai to manipulate our minds, our thoughts, everything. Because everything the Lord does is in perfection. Right. So you get the point. So Baba Kasha, see the um the description box, Lord willing, and watch that video El Apostle did. And that's what inspired me. Because he said something in it. I try to remember, he said something about uh um, you, I wonder why they would do such a thing. And he said, now I understand. Something to that effect. Yeah? All right? So I'm going to bring a couple of scriptures. Not too long. Second Corinthians 2 verse 11. And it reads, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. 
for we are not ignorant of his devices. How are you not going to be ignorant? First and foremost, it has to be ordained from the Lord. He has to call you first. Okay? The Lord has to wake you up first, call you. He has to send you to the right men for teaching the apostles of Great Millstone. Right? To break down these scriptures for you to understand. This is why we talk about going to the secret place. Those scriptures. At that time when I was speaking to my friend, you think at that stage I was thinking about manipulation of the weather. Yeah? You think I was thinking down those lines? No, but look at how many years later. Right? According to the scriptures, you see? If you turn to the Lord and repent, the Lord would reveal certain things to you. All right? All of the scriptures in your knowing part and your prophesying part. But you have the 100% truth which we are getting from our apostles to know what is what. This is again, the Satan should get an advantage of us, right? For we are not who? The ones that turn to the Lord in truth and sincerity, they will not be ignorant of his devices. So no matter how you turn it, this is all the will of the Lord. Yeah? Because the Lord is in control of both sides. The good and the bad. So I'm going to go to the GNT. Exodus 23 verse 2. Do not follow the majority when they do wrong or when they give testimony that perverts justice. This is why we say turn to the Lord. It says evacuate. Evacuate and you know, order out of chaos. Order out of chaos. This is what Esau Edom does. Now you have to be wise, of course. If you see the house falling down, of course you're going to evacuate. Right? But in a spiritual sense, evacuate, you turn to the Lord. Repent now. And you'll understand. Okay? Turn to Yahweh Basham Yahushai Basham Rekar Kodash. So I'm going to still be in the GNT. A few verses, and this is the last one. Isaiah 8, verse 7 to 13. All right, so I'm going to read a few, few verses from 7 to 13. All right, the GNT. I, the Lord, will bring the emperor of Assyria and all his forces to attack Judah. All right, this is what it's about, you know. It's about Jacob and Esau. Right? They lost the birthright and they have a perpetual hatred. They're going to say, I'm getting that back. But they can't get it back. So what is the next stage? If I'm going down, you're coming down too with me. This is why we have to turn to our Heavenly Father and praise our power to the best of our ability and serve Him to the best of our ability. And hope and pray that we are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. Right? They will advance. Now, let me start again. I, the Lord, will bring the emperor of Assyria and all his forces to attack Judah. They will advance like a flood, waters of the Euphrates River, overflowing all its banks they will sweep through judah in a flood rising shoulder high and covering everything yahweh is with us his outspread wings protect the land gather together in fear 
you nations, listen, you distant parts of the earth. Get ready to fight, but be afraid. Yes, get ready, but be afraid. Make your plans, but they will never succeed. As we said, it will come to naught. If it's the counsel of men, it will come to naught. Make no your plans, but they will never succeed. Talk all you want to, but it is all useless because the Lord Yahweh Basham Yahshai Basham Rekakodash is with us. So this is why he must turn to the Lord. And he says, the Lord wants the prophet. He says, with his great power, the Lord warned me not to follow the road which the people were following. Okay? He said, do not join in the schemes of the people and do not be afraid of the things that they fear. Remember that I, the Lord Yahweh Shamiashai Almighty, am holy. I am the one you must fear. So is that's why you see evacuate, evacuate, run. You could run in, but where are you going to hide? This is why they say the prophets preach because he says, "Give them warning from me." It's the Lord that's doing everything. The Lord Yahweh Basham Yahshai Basham Rekakura is the perfect manipulator. Okay? The Lord creates floods and the Lord creates drought. Okay? But the Lord that we turn to is a perfect balance. Because you need water. Okay? So the Lord won't create floods because he not, he'll balance it out that you get water. Enough to water the, the vegetation, to drink, whatever. Okay? And the drought, the Lord's in control of it because too much of it is not good either. That's why you must turn to the Lord because what happened? The Lord flooded the earth the first time. And if you're not going to turn to the Lord, right? He's going to do it via fire. Okay? Which is the which is the, 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 the World War Three, the nuclear missiles. You remember the the earth is going to rock to and fro. Where are you going to run? Where are you going to hide? Okay? So he said, evacuate now. No, 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 no. Turn to the Lord, Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Rekakudash, now. Turn now. Yes? And still we have to beg our Heavenly Father to remain into the truth. Baba Gosha, please do not take the Holy Spirit away. This job here is a continuous fight. It's an a, a, a ongoing fight. Okay? So when you turn to the Lord, Lord willing, if the Lord calls you, you have to pray to stay and to remain unto the end. He that endureth to the end. He that endureth to the end. We haven't reached our end. That's why we say we fear the Heavenly Father. Fear. Right? He says, remember that I, the Lord, he says all in caps, Almighty. I'm holy. I am the one you must fear. Okay? That's why the, the, the scripture says, you know, it says that fear not the man, I'm paraphrasing, fear not who can, can uh, kill the body but fear who can kill the body and soul. Okay? And this is what Esau Eden wants, have full manipulation. He 
He wants to have full control. But you remember, if it were possible, they would fool the very elect. If it were possible. Yeah? So again, Psalms 91 and 1, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, the Holy Scriptures, shall abide under the shadow, under the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? Imagine having a covering over you at all times. In Psalm 91 again, it says, um, it says, a thousand shall fall. Oh, just let me have to bring that one out. I have to bring that one. Baba Gosha, just two more seconds, please. Uh, um, a thousand. A thousand. Um, a thousand. Oh, come on. Uh, shall fall. There it is. Rakathi Yahweh Sham Yahushai. Right. Um, Psalms 91, verse 7. So this is why we must, you know, try to repent and turn to our Heavenly Father. It says, A thousand shall fall, Psalm 91, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Wow! We need Yahweh Sham Yahushai badly for that protection. Okay? And Baba, Baba Kasha, keep on praying for the brothers that are in Florida. Keep on putting up your prayers for, for protection. They're covered. They're covered. But pray for them. Okay? Because they're doing the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Basham, Yahshai Basham, Yeah? So I think that's it. Lord willing. So, oh yes, remember, go and watch Elder Apostle Gabar's video. I'll put it in the um, description box. Okay? Lord's will. All right? So I hope and pray that it's edifying through the spirit and the power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Rakathi Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Rakar Kodash. And again, we give double honors to our apostles of Great Millstone. All right? Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle, Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Gabar, Elder Apostle Rakar, Elder Apostle Aramla, Elder Bishops come down. All right, we give double honors to our teachers. All right, so we keep on praying for the for, for our strength to continue in the walk, in continue in the right path. Right, of Yahweh Basham Yahushai, Amen. Much love to you, beloved brothers and sisters and children. Right, and we say thawada to our apostles for because prophecies are happening and it's going to get tighter and tougher. But we just, Lord willing, we hold on, Lord willing, we fight the good fight of faith. Okay, and again, much love to you, brothers, sisters, and children. Apostles, come down. Shalom.